Hi, my name is Art Fuel, and I'm a systems engineer with the Networking and Security Business Unit at VMware. And today I'll be walking through a basic installation of vRealize Network Insight 3.2 for the purpose of conducting a pre-assessment. Now this is a basic, temporary installation of vRealize Network Insight, so if you're doing a more complex or long-lived install, please work with your VMware account team and professional services as there are lots of things you should plan for with that that go beyond the scope of what's covered in this video. Now, prior to watching this video, you should have reviewed the documentation and all the prerequisites for uh, vRealize Network Insight. I will refer to that by its nickname of Verney for the rest of this video. So Verney equals vRealize Network Insight. I'm going to go ahead and open up my lab and we will do the installation. Now, prior to doing installation, I have downloaded and saved the two virtual appliance files that are required to a to the hard drive of this desktop and this desktop has access to transfer the files into my vCenter environment that's important so I'll first go to my hosts and clusters view in vCenter or web plant and I'm going to run the deploy OVF template wizard and you can run this at the data center level at the cluster level or in this case I have a specific host prepared for it so I'm going to right click on that host and kick off the deploy OVF template. I have the file saved locally, so I'm going to navigate. And make sure you expand these so you can see the long file names. You have to be sure to pick the platform OVA first. The platform OVA must be fully installed before you begin to start the proxy OVA installation. So we'll select that and click Next. On the review details, next. Accept the license agreement, next. And uh, I'm going to use the default name, or you can choose a name of your own, and select a folder in your data center environment where you would like the VM stored. For the hardware configuration, the default of medium works uh, and is appropriate for most pre assessment installations. Next, we need to select the virtual disk format and the storage target where you'd like the virtual machine to be deployed to. And then select the port group you would like to deploy the virtual appliance onto. The port group or subnet does need to have access to the vCenter uh, management subnet. In this case I'm deploying it directly onto the management subnet. And uh, to customize the template, we'll need to assign an IP address to the appliance, NetMask, Gateway, DNS server, and a NTP server. I'm going to pause the video while I enter those values. Okay, I've typed in the values. And remember, these are values that are specific to my lab environment. You will need to put values that are appropriate for your environment. Now, on this advanced configuration, click this arrow to uh, expand that section and scroll down. There is a log push enable by default that reports some diagnostic data back to VMware. For pre-assessments, it's typically good practice to uncheck this. And if you do leave it checked, please be sure that the customer who's installing this is aware that this uh, is set. Finally, review the settings and check the power on after deployment and click finish to deploy the appliance. Now th at this point, vCenter will transfer the large virtual appliance file from the desktop, uh, from this desktop, to the vCenter data store, and it's going to take a few minutes. You can monitor the progress on the recent tasks pane here. I'm going to pause the video while uh, this is uploading, and I'll resume once it's uploaded. Okay, we're back, and you can see here in the recent tasks that my uh, OVF template was deployed, the virtual machine was powered on, and if I look over here in my host and clusters view, I can see the appliance running and powered on. Now we're going to open a new browser tab, and we're going to direct it to the IP address that we assigned to the virtual appliance um, in the previous step. So in my case, that's 192.168, oops, .110.101. Now keep in mind when you, uh, one thing is that this is uh, using a self-signed certificate, so you may need to click advanced here and proceed to acknowledge that. And one other thing to remember is 
Once the virtual machine powers on, it will need a minute to fully initialize its web browser and application. So the first time when you load this, if it doesn't load immediately, give it a minute and come back. And you can see here, the first thing it asks for is a license key. Um, you uh, make sure before you're proceeding, you receive a license key from your VMware account team. So I'm going to paste my license key in and click validate. And once it validates, it shows me uh, information about my license key and when it expires. So I want to make sure that is still current and click activate. And once it's activated, it brings us to uh, the initial screen where we need to generate a shared secret for the proxy VM. So we'll generate this here. Now that does take a minute to generate. I paused the video while that was generating. And we'll copy this. And I'm going to go back to the vSphere web client. And now I'm going to deploy the second proxy OVA. In my case, I want to deploy that on my ESX-06A host. So I'll right click here and we'll do the deploy OVF template again, just like before. Well, I have the file saved locally. I'm going to select the proxy OVA, open. And we'll click Next on Review Details, accept the license agreement. Uh, you uh, select a name and a folder location. The medium configuration. Select the virtual disk format and the target data store. And select the network. Now I recommend that you put the proxy and the platform OVAs onto the same subnet. That's not required for production installations, but it is definitely um, uh, expedient when you're doing a, a pre-assessment. And on the customized template, there's a few properties that we have to fill out. The shared secret that we just copied, and then IP address, net mask, gateway, DNS server, and NTP server. I'm going to pause it while I enter these values. Again, please be sure to use values that are specific to your environment. And also on this, we'll select the advanced configuration, scroll down, and uncheck the log push to cloud setting box. We'll click next, review the configuration, select power on after deployment, and click finish. Once again, this will take a few minutes to load, so I will pause the video here. Remember, you can review the status in the review t recent tasks pane. Okay, we're back and you can see that my proxy OVA has successfully deployed and it is uh, powered on in the vCenter environment. Now I wanted to show you, uh, right after it powers on, it'll still need a few minutes to fully boot up. And you'll see this screen here that says not yet detected. So once it's powered on, give it a few minutes and come back. I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, we're back and we can see here, it says proxy detected, so we'll click finish. And now we'll log into the appliance with the default password. The username is admin at local. And the password is just admin, all lowercase. And you can see here it says we are in assessment mode. So it's important, again, this is for pre-assessment. You have to use an evaluation key to be able to see the assessment mode. So this will only look like this if you've used an evaluation key. So I'll press OK. We'll click Add Data Source to add our vCenter environment. And then we'll click here on the Add New Source tab, or button. We're going to select VMware vCenter as the source type. And we'll go ahead and give it the uh, IP address. Or if you have set it up in, DS, or sorry, in DNS, you can type in the, the domain name. I'm going to pause it while I'm typing these in. Now keep in mind, this username and password is one for your vCenter environment. In this case, I'm using an administrator password, but at minimum, the account that you use has to have permissions to modify uh, the VMware distributed switches and distributed port groups. So we'll click validate here. Give that, a, oops, wrong IP address. There we go. And once that's validated, we have the option to enable NetFlow IP fix on this vCenter. This is very important, and you'll want to select 
the distributed switches that you would like to include in the analysis. You do have the ability to expand these and to select individual port groups, but I'm going to select all the distributed switches in my environment, give it a nickname, whatever you'd like here for the nickname is fine, and hit submit. Now you can see here in the data sources page that we have this here and it's on, and at this point we are collecting data. So we're essentially done. I'm going to click back here on this upper left-hand corner logo to return to the home page. And now I am on the home page. You can see this analyze flow section here is where I will return to generate the assessment report. Now uh, the vRealize Network Insights needs to gather data for a minimum of two hours and generally for at least several days. But please work with your VMware account team to determine the optimal length of analysis for your environment and when you're done with that time you'll come here and generate a flow I'm sorry generate a report here and work with the VMware account team to analyze the report thank you for joining